Hey everyone, this is Helena and I'm here with my very good friend and fellow coach Matt Schaefer again today. Welcome, Matt. Hi, Helena. It's so wonderful to be back. Connecting with your tribe, it's always the highlight of my week, if not my month. So thanks for having me back. I'm super <laughs> love excited. Love it. Yes. And hi to everyone already joining in the chat. We know you're going to absolutely love this topic. For those of you who aren't familiar with Matt, I'm sure you know who Matt is, right? He's an amazing coach. He has a big channel here on YouTube as well. And he is a uh, empowerment connection and relationship coach who helps women connect more deeply to themselves so they can have the kind of relationship they've always wanted. And he's actually an expert in this topic that we're going to be talking about today. I believe Matt, are we just uh, we didn't get a chance to chat before we start recording but do you remember about a year or maybe two years ago you did a uh, a video for my channel on how to touch a man <laughs> and it quickly rose to one of the top videos on my channel it has probably over three hundred and twenty five thousand views at this point mm -hmm. and matt is a total expert i was uh researching before we started this today and when i was searching your name popped up with how to turn a man on <laughs> matt schaefer how to turn a man on so he's like a world expert in this topic now and i came to him a little earlier this week and i'm like all right matt like like how to touch a man and how to turn him on. What about with the world, the way everything is right now, a lot of couples are long distance or they're separated mm -hmm. right now because of COVID or they're not meeting men in real life yet. They're a little hesitant about that. So is it possible to actually turn a man on without touching him? And that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about here today. You know, and even if you're in a relationship and you wanna send one of these sexy text messages to your man while he's at work to get him thinking about you nonstop all day long, mm -hmm. And let's just jump right in. What's the first thing you want to say on this topic? Actually, before we get started, while we're waiting for some people to join, let's talk about your free course that's starting very soon. Yes, y'all. I'd love to have you be a part of my free live love and transformation course, Mastery of Connection. It's going to be an amazing three-week live experience with me and my team of coaches. Uh, over 10,000 women from like 50 plus countries, including many, like many hundreds of people from Elena's community, mm -hmm. thousands really have gone through it. And we're going to help you connect with men better and help you connect with yourself from the inside out. So it's truly a transformational course that helps lay a foundation for that beautiful relationship you've always been wanting, right? So we start February 8th and uh, there'll be a link in the description that you can click on. There's an application you fill out. It's super quick. And then we start February 8th and it's going to be three weeks. So Don Lindsay has taken it. We got lots mm -hmm. of folks watching, I think, who have, have taken my course, who are alumni of it. And we've had marriages, relationships. And for everybody that really does the work and shows up, they, 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 they leave the course better than they started it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They have more confidence, more empowerment, and it's just, it's a beautiful experience. So I'd yeah. love to cordially invite you to join us. Yes. And I am very clear about this. Like, you know, you guys know, I offer a lot of, uh, you know, I recommend a lot of free courses and things like that with all of my expert friends. If you're going to take one free course that I recommend this year, take this one for sure. I get feedback all the time from women who just say it's life changing. You know, if you mm -hmm. look at the comments on some of our other videos, people say it totally changed their life. We had some, we had a, you know, woman who got married just from taking mm -hmm. it the last time. Yep. We've, there's so many amazing success stories. So yes. Annette said she just applied. So go ahead and close the live chat, click the description or click the title of this video. It'll open up the description and it's the first link and you can go apply. It's going to fill up very quickly because Matt um, also gives personal coaching during his office hours. So you can get yeah. personally coached by Matt and his team, get all your personal questions answered. And it's mm -hmm. totally 100% free, no strings attached. So everyone definitely go check that out. Yes. Changed my life. I hear about this all the time and it's totally free. So why not yeah. um, go ahead and apply for it? And it starts very soon. And I know it's going to fill up, you know, maybe by this weekend. So definitely apply today if you're interested. Okay. Just time I, for Valentine's day. Let's yes. go. Yes, Let's dive yes. into this topic, shall Let's we? Let's do it. Yes, I usually like to wait till about 100 people join so we don't get a million questions in the chat. What's the first one? What's the yeah. second one? But it looks like we're there already <laughs> in the first four minutes. So yes, let's dive in, Matt. What's the first thing you have for us on this topic? So first off, I want to lay, lay a little context. I love to lay context, right? And one a main principle that I want you to understand is that it turns men on to know that the effect that you have on them 
right? Mm. We are not mind readers. We do not have like a window <laughs> into what you're thinking and feeling. And a lot of times we have no idea that anything we're saying and doing is turning you on, making you happy, inspiring you, activating you, anything like that. So anytime you're able to give us that window and let us know, hey, so the, what, what you're doing and how you're acting or what you're saying, it's really getting my motor running. Like that's extremely activating to a man. It's mm. very empowering to us. And so a lot of the principles, a lot of the texts I'm going to share with you are based around that principle of giving a man a clear window into how you think and feel and what a powerful impact you're having on him. Does that make sense, Elena? Does yes. Love yeah. it. Yeah, I yeah. know. For whatever reason, it can be so easy just to assume that a guy knows <laughs> what turns us on or what we like. And yeah, I love that. Letting him know what feels good to you. So good. So um, there's so much I want to say on this, but I know we're a little short on time today. So I love we're that. Gonna... I think that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. So it's really important. And the second, the second principle before we get into the five texts, second important principle is the power of future pacing. Now, future pacing is when you speak into a future experience that you're looking forward to or that you're thinking about or you're anticipating having with a guy. When you use future pacing with a guy, and again, you can do this from anywhere in the world, right? When you use future pacing with a guy and talk about that stuff and speak into it, you actually can draw him into that experience in the present moment. So you can actually make him start imagining and feeling and experiencing that incredible connection that y'all are going to share at some point in the future. You'll make him experience that right now which is incredibly mm. powerful and it helps build that connection and create a collective experience with him. So using future and pace, using future pacing will actually get his brain to release dopamine and make him feel like he's having that experience with you right now. So these two principles are what we're going to be building off of in this live, right? It's the yeah. whole thing of, you know, giving a man a window into your mind, right? And using future pacing to activate him and get him really turned on no matter where you are. All right. So those so are the true. two principles, right? Love and so it. now, and so, and so, you know, the, the really, but what I want you to start with, right? One of the most important things I want you to start with is that the future experience or feeling statement, right? So these are really important. So you want to use a feeling statement based around, you know, something that you're looking forward to experiencing from him in the future. So something like, I can't wait to feel your lips on my neck later. Mm. Like it's, it's going to feel like I, I, I love the way that, you know, our skin feels pressed together and I'm so excited to, to feel your body pressed up against mine later, you know, something like that, where you're using a positive feeling statement to really like ground in him, how much you're looking forward to that, to that moment. Right. Because you're, because, you, you know, positive feeling statements, Elena, aren't those very, like, uh, those are very powerful, right. When it mm -hmm. comes to like making an impact with a guy, right? Oh yeah, I, I talk about that all the time in all areas, but it's so great to hear that in this area too, absolutely, that will turn a man on, you know? Don't get confused mm -hmm. here. Men love hearing about your feelings and what <laughs> something would feel like. And especially, um, like it's a positive emotion that feels so good, this would feel so good. I'm feeling so excited about spending time with you later or anything like that. Yeah, you can't go wrong really doing that. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you boil it down even further, right, because we talk a lot about feminine energy on this channel and, mm -hmm. the, and the balance and the dance of the masculine and the feminine, I say this a lot, right, but the masculine loves being acknowledged for what they're doing. And I just don't mean in building their business. I mean, acknowledged for what they're doing to you, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can acknowledge a man for the, for the effect that his actions are going to have on you, you know, or the fact that his actions are having on you, you're very much building him up and grounding him in his masculine energy. And you're coming from a very feminine space, right? And you always want to be asking yourself when you're texting with a man or engaging with a man in any way, am I dropped into my feminine essence, right? Am I, and am I activating and inviting him to step deeper into his masculine? So you're reinforcing what you love him doing to you, what you're really excited about him doing to you soon. That's going to make a huge difference. Yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up. I mean, you know, my channel is all about feminine energy and connecting to yourself and your own feelings and heart's desires. Yeah. This, a lot of people are afraid to do something like this because they're like, well, isn't that leaning forward? Isn't that masculine energy? Um, I'd love to hear any quick response. Cause I know we're going to get questions about that. Um, 
I would say, of course, you don't want to do this to try and like make something happen. If a guy's pulled away for two weeks and you're going to like do this to try to get him back, wrong way to go. <laughs> if you have a result like that in mind, you're, you're obviously coming from your masculine energy. But if you're simply expressing how something's going to feel, and this is a man whose ener energy is generally coming towards you, I think that's phenomenal. But I'd love to hear your thoughts, Matt. Yeah. I mean, you always want to look at the, you know, the, the, the context around what the situation is too. Right. So I, I'm coming from a space of you're at a fairly neutral space with mm -hmm. a guy, like mm -hmm. you're, you're dating him. He's reasonably invested. He doesn't need to be a thousand percent in, but he, he also, you also don't want to, you don't want to do these with a guy who's got one or two feet out the door. Exactly. <laughs> right. Those yeah. are situations. I, I mean, the only ex ex exception to that would be if you're in a relationship, you've been in a relationship for a long time, it's a monogamous relationship and maybe things have gotten a little monotonous or he's sort of, sort of checking out a little bit physically or romantically, like the fire has died a little bit. These can work, right? To help sort of like reactivate him. Mm -hmm. A lot of times if a man in relationship is checking out, it's because he feels emasculated. It's because he doesn't feel like the guy anymore or he and, and and so like by you doing these to him you're not necessarily stepping into your masculine right if you're acknowledging him and building him up with what a powerful impact he's having on you or what you're looking forward and excited about him doing to you later those are actually things that are going to like really ground him in his manhood <laughs> and it's going to be you operating from your feminine space mm -hmm. you know and so it really is a polarizing thing to, to do. And it's not you being in your masculine, but even being in your masculine a little bit, isn't necessarily a bad thing. If you two are on like even footing, if the mm -hmm. relationship is in a fairly mm -hmm. balanced place and you want to spice things up, it's actually fun to play with polarity, which actually goes right into the second point that I want to make, or the second type of texting tip you can use. And that's the present sensation statement. So it's, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. a future action. It's a future action statement. So a future action statement basically goes through, you know, like, I can't wait to do this to you later. I can't wait to push you up against the wall and kiss you later. Like that's actually extremely, that can be extremely hot for a guy because like a guy who's in his masculine, it can be very attractive to have a woman, you know, take that from him, like just for a minute, just mm -hmm. for a moment. To mm -hmm. operate with that sort of like uh, that sort of aggression towards him, it's sexy, right? Because it's sort of like it can be an interruption, right? Especially if y'all have gotten into a rut of like, you know, I do this, you respond, I do this, you respond, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you take the initiative and say, I can't wait to, you know, rake my rake my nails down your neck, rake, rake my nails down your back later. That's something that like a guy's going to be like, oh my God, you know, like, and again, he's going to start thinking about that. And whenever you're using these future statements, right, where I can't wait to feel you do this to me, or I can't wait to do this to you, right? What are you doing? You're actually also inviting him to respond in kind, right? Mm -hmm. You're making an invitation to him because you're leading by example, right? You're making an invitation for him to say, oh yeah, I can't wait to, you know, feel your your body pressed up against me or I can't wait to you know like it's it's gonna it's gonna invite him mm -hmm. to give you something back right and that's how you create an exchange in texting or uh, that's really gonna activate both of you and prime the pump on uh on, on this connection that you two have mm -hmm. together and it builds mm -hmm. intimacy right which yeah. is something especially in a long distance relationship, especially in quarantine where we don't necessarily get to see each other as often as we like, right? Like it's the sort of thing where the more conscious, deliberate intimacy we can create through the way that we communicate with each other, the, the more stable our relationships are going to be. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yes. I think that's great. Yeah. Thanks for this immediate feedback. Great advice. Uh, Kavita says, I definitely tell this to my guy. It sure, it sure really has a magic. Love it. Yes. Okay. This is phenomenal. I think I, everything you're saying totally right on, right? It's not, it's not a way to have a relationship all the time and always be the initiator, always give, but it's just mm -hmm. a tool, right? To get this guy thinking about you nonstop. I love that. I call it planting a future seed in his mind. It's something he could get later. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I think that's phenomenal. I love it. Yeah. What's the next thing you have for us, Matt? Yeah, absolutely. So the next one, and now we're, we're going to go from the future into more of the present. So mm -hmm. the next sort of text you can send him is a present sensation statement, right? Where you can say something like, I'm getting a tingle down my spine, you know, thinking about, uh, thinking about how it feels to have you next to me, or, you know, I'm getting goosebumps 
right? Like thinking about that. Or even if you want to get really explicit, you can be like, wow, I'm getting a little, you know, uh, I don't want to say moist because I know women hate that word, but <laughs> <laughs> like I'm actually, I'm like getting wet thinking about, you know, how much I, how turned on I am by you and just how much I can't wait to see you. Something like that. Like when mm -hmm. you give, when, when a man can, can recognize and connect with that in that moment, in that moment, you're thinking about him and it's turning you on. It's physically having an impact on you. And he hasn't even had to do anything or say anything. Holy crap. That is one of the most, like, that is one of the most activating things and one of the most empowering things you can do for a man. So if your guy, if you feel like your guy needs a little, you know, confidence boost, or he needs to just really be regrounded in, in how much he, uh, yeah, Kristen says, don't say that word. Yeah. <laughs> I, know. I said it as a joke. I said yeah. it as a joke. <laughs> you know, these, these present sensation statements, mm -hmm. they're really going to, they're going to bring both of you into the present moment, right? Mm -hmm. and he's going to really be able to connect with the impact that you're having on him. And it's initially going to turn the conversation may, that may have gotten a little mundane into like a sensual activated present moment dialogue. And he's going to respond the same. Oh, wow. Well, you know, hearing that just makes me so, it just makes me, you know, feel so turned on. Like, and, and then he's going to start thinking about the next time that y'all can talk or the next mm -hmm. time y'all can play together or whatever. And it really like, it co-creates, it allows you two to co-create a present moment experience together. That totally. Can really, yeah, it can be really yeah. powerful. A present sensation, you know, a present sensation statement is extremely powerful. Yeah. I love it. Angela says, say juicy. Love it. You guys are, you're cracking me up. I'm trying not to juicy. get distracted, but can you hear me? Okay, Matt, is everything okay with my sound? I keep adjusting my mic. We had a little glitch last time with the sound, but everything's okay. I keep moving my mm -hmm. microphone around because I just want to make sure it's good. Okay. Yes. Love it. This is phenomenal. Uh, let's, let's go to the mm -hmm. next one. So now this next one, right? This is where you're really making a conscious invitation for him to be vulnerable. So a lot mm -hmm. of times you can piggyback off of your present sensation statement with a present sensation question. So this is where you ask him, you know, something to the effect of, oh, how does, how does it make you feel? to hear what I want to do to you, to hear how I'm, how horny I am right now, to hear, you know, what I'm thinking about. How does it make you feel to think about, you know, that time when we went to the coast and we didn't leave, you know, bed for like 16 straight hours, you know, like, like anytime you're making an invitation to him to really like talk about how turned on he is, which a lot of times men need a little encouragement, right? I've talked mm -hmm. a lot about this, but you know, men are like baby giraffes. A lot of times when it comes to vulnerability and, uh, emotional and, and physical connection and sexual expression is for many men, it's a form of emotional expression, right? We express ourselves through our physicality to our partners and to women. So it can be very scary for men to talk about, you know, how turned on they are or mm -hmm. what's, mm -hmm. what's, what's getting their motor running, you know? And so by you making that invitation, how does it, how does it make you feel to hear how horny I am for you right now? Like, that's the sort of thing where like a man's going to be like, oh, wow, she actually wants to hear how I'm doing. You know, mm -hmm. like that's, that's really cool because, because it's giving a guy a platform and it's helping him feel safe, you know, in expressing that stuff with you, which it can be scary for a guy to be intimacy, yeah. that's why it's, to be intimate like that. Right. It's like, we're like baby giraffes with this stuff. So yeah. really more you can invite him to step out and express how he's feeling, whether it be like just straight up, straight emotional or, or sexual, the more, you know, intimacy you're going to, in, in the de deepening of your connection, y'all are going to create together. I love that creating an invitation because especially if men have maybe tried to do that a little in the past, maybe past relationships and they were shut down, they might be really scared to come across this too much or something. So creating that invitation is brilliant. I love that. If things are moving along, right? Obviously, like I'm probably going to say this a hundred times, but this isn't a way to like get a man to text you more or anything like this is for if you're in a relationship or a guy's energy is generally coming towards you, right? Yeah, you're you're in a relationship. You're dating a guy. Mm -hmm. You're both, you know, on the same page. Like you just want to be conscious of that. Texting, you know, texting should not devolve into the daily report. It should mm -hmm. not devolve into, you know, a way of just holding each other accountable. Oh, well, you didn't text me when you got home from work. Da 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 da. da. You don't want texting to become work. Like yeah. texting can be an activating resource for the two of you to build intimacy, for the two of you to play, right? For the two of you to, to, to create deeper connection, to turn each other on and to really like set the stage for incredible experiences when you have the time and the opportunity to be together.
you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so really thinking of it like that when you're in relationship is important when you're, when, when you're in the early stages, when you're just barely getting to know somebody, you don't, you obviously, you don't want to over text. You don't want to, you know, you want to use texting as a tool pretty specifically to arrange and coordinate, you know, your next deeper connection mm -hmm. or, 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 or communication, right? You want to yeah. use texting to, to plan the next zoom date mm -hmm. or the next person date, right? If you're going to be socially distanced or like whatever you're doing, you know, like in early stage dating, don't over rely on text. Mm -hmm. and don't, you know, default straight into dirty texting. Cause a lot of times men that are just looking to, you know, take advantage of women or whatever, will just ask for nudes or do whatever right mm -hmm. off the bat. And so, you know, don't, don't go down, don't do this unless, you know, you're in a specific place to, right. to, yeah. to build, you're looking to cultivate deeper connection with a guy that you're on the same page. Yeah. With. It's, you don't want to just come right out on the game, <laughs> come right out the game with this. Right. Um, love it. Yes. What are we, are we on number four? We're on number four. Yeah. yeah. So number four, uh, or this could be number five, but we're cruising. I got plenty by the way. Okay. So we're, we're just going to keep yeah. going. Right. Uh, is that, you know, questions around the subject of sex, right? Mm -hmm. This is something that can be really powerful. Like what's the craziest place you've ever had sex? You know, what's your favorite way to, you know, like what's your favorite way of, you know, getting a blow job? Like what is like asking him questions that are specifically about his sex life can be really powerful and really activating and can really build intimacy and vulnerability with him. Because here's the thing, like men, a lot of times they feel like their sex life has to be like this secret. Like they have mm -hmm. shame around their sex life and they're scared that if they talk to you about what they like or experiences they've had in the past, that you're going to take that personally. Right, that you're going to take that as a sign that you know, like they're not going to volunteer that information <laughs> a lot of times, yeah. right? Because they're scared that if they do, that they're that you're going to take it as, oh, well, you're saying that you liked this with this other person because what I'm doing isn't good enough. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So, like for men, it's like a minefield, and a lot of men are going to be very intimidated to share, you know, like the, the whatever their hottest experiences were in the past. So, if you can have the courage right? And to ask him these questions and to do it from a space of true, genuine curiosity and softness. Like this is a time when talking about feminine energy, you want to be super dropped into your softest, most feminine, most open, most curious, most gentle energy. When you ask him these questions, like very sensual, you know, like, oh, so what's your, what's your, what's been the craziest place? Like ask, invite him to tell a story about some of his like craziest sexual experiences or his favorite, you know, times that he's had sex in the past. And you're going to learn a lot <laughs> about what he likes, how to really deep that deepen that connection with him. And it's going to really like help him feel really safe. Right. And one of the most important things that y'all want to like, remember that you're cultivating with a man when you're communicating with him about sex is safety. Like mm. you want, him to be your emotion. You want, you know, he, you want to, you want him to feel like you are his emotional sanctuary. Like you are a space that he can, you know, be himself and share his heart, share what's in his heart or in his bedroom without judgment. Right. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest mm -hmm. ways you can communicate that to a man is by just like asking him questions about sex and the instant that he clicks, that he can talk about what he likes in bed or what he's into, he's going to feel much safer with you. He's going to feel more open and he's going to turn him on big time. Mm -hmm. And it's going to make, it's going to make y'all have a better physical connection and much more trust in relationship, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I do want to mention, you want to like, if you really do want to hear about those, these things, right? Like don't ask a question you don't want uh, the answer to, but if, yeah, people are loving this advice. So tune in with yourself. If this is something that you want to talk about, you feel comfortable sharing within yourself because he's going to probably ask you that question right back to you. <laughs> so make sure yeah. there's like, something you're actually ready to talk about and want to hear about. So um, yeah, everyone is, is definitely connecting with this and we're going to answer questions too at the end because i see some great ones in the chat so yeah what is the final i think we're on number five right what's the yeah, final? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and the last yeah, thing i want to really the last like tip i want to use is sort of like a big blanket tip is that like a lot of people just get thumb arthritis just mm. back and forth lines of text and the last thing i want to ground y'all in is that there is nothing more powerful than multimedia messaging <laughs> men mm. are inherently we have we, we much more we're much we're very visual creatures right so using multimedia messaging and using videos and sound can make a can make a text go from just being kind of mundane to being incredibly sexy and i actually want to start with voice 
texts, voice memos. Mm -hmm. Like there have been scientific studies that have shown that like hearing a woman's voice in a sensual way can actually electri send electric sensations through a man's skin. You can actually electrify his body with the power of your voice. So any of the texts that we've talked about, if you want to really amplify them and make them 10 times more activating, send them as a voice memo. Mm. Practice them because mm -hmm. not only is that going to really make him crazy to hear you talk with that sensual energy, it's also going to help you, you know, own your voice and be more confident in the way that you communicate with him. And him seeing you owning your voice and being confident, that's going to turn him on too. Yeah, definitely. So mm -hmm. There's like lay, there's like levels to which how con like when you demonstrate that confidence to be able to get on the phone and say something super sexy to him, even if you don't like the sound of your voice or you're kind of scared or nervous to do it, it's going to really, it's going to really light him up. <laughs> you know, like, mm -hmm. there you go. Brianne, yeah. Brianne gets it. Voice text. Like give, give us yeah. a one out there, y'all. If y'all do voice yeah. texting with, mm -hmm. your, uh, with your partners, I'd love to, I'd love to see how many of y'all do that. Cause it's a, it's a whole new, it's like an art form. Yeah. <laughs> and the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love it. I think that's great. Okay. I'm going to scroll up and look for questions. Can you recap these yeah. five? Because there's yeah. some people who are just joining us right now. They probably want to hear the earlier Absolutely. ones. Absolutely. Yeah. And the last and the last thing while you're looking for oh, questions, yeah. the last uh -huh. thing I want to say on multimedia messaging is, you know, like I highly recommend doing visual, you know, picture sort of messages, but not nudes, <laughs> not nudes, unless you want to just like blow the thing through the roof. Right. But here's <laughs> the thing, like, don't just default to sending him nudes. It's so much more activating and enticing to send him a picture of you sitting in your office, like gripping the hem of your skirt because you're so turned on or chewing on the end of a, of a pen, like looking essentially at the camera. Right. Or even something funny, like a, like a 50 shades of gray sort of like meme with like handcuffs slung over a, a bedpost, you know, something like that, like th and thinking of you with it, right? Mm -hmm. So sending him like a teasing, inviting, activating image that's going to really get him excited about what, what may be happening in the future. That's what you want to do. Don't, don't go right to nudes unless you just want to like have him have to go run to the bathroom and manage himself or just escalate the whole thing out of, <laughs> into a whole, you know, other space. So right. that's I want to see about yeah. multimedia messaging. <laughs> I'm so glad you said that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I can recap yeah, real let's quick recap and I'm going to scroll up and look for questions, but yes, I'm so glad you said that. I'm really, really glad you included that. Thank you for that. Yeah, like, don't <laughs> just send a nude. And also right. if you're going to send a nude, you know, be, be conscious that you have now sent a nude exactly. picture out into the internet, <laughs> out into the world yeah. and you get to surrender what happens with that mm -hmm. naked picture for the rest of your life. Oh, like yeah. that. We is, all we all know we all have friends. We all have friends that have sent the nude, and now they're not with the guy anymore, and they're freaking out. Like, don't be that person, right? Now. Don't be that. Don't be that person. Don't be, yeah. You got to be cool with it. You got to be willing to let that go. Okay. Yeah. So, so just to recap what we talked about. First off, I covered two important principles. One of which was it turns men on to know the effect you have on them. We're not mind readers. We don't don't assume that we know how how sexy you think we are or how much, you know, what we're doing turns you on. Like give us a window into your mind. It's very activating, it's very empowering for us and we really love it. Second principle is the power of future pacing. And this is where, you know, like by, by talking about how much you're looking forward to something in the future or what you're, what you're, what you're imagining in the future, you can actually get his dopamine to release and have him have that experience in the present moment. Mm -hmm. So it's a great way to drop a guy into his body and get him really, 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 really turned on. So, you know, and then the five principles I've talked about are the five texting tips I've talked about. The first text is the future experience feeling statement, right? So it's where you talk about, oh my God, uh, I love when you, you know, when you kiss me like this, like it turns me on so much to feel your body pressed up against me. Like, I can't wait to feel that. I can't wait to feel your lips on my neck later. Like just mm -hmm. saying things like that about what, what he's, what he's going to do, how it's going to make you feel in the future is extremely activating. Number two is a future action statement where it's actually where this is where you play with polarity and you sort of take the masculine and say, I can't wait to, you know, push you up against that wall to slam you down to, you know, do something like that, where you talk about how much you're looking forward to taking the initiative later. That's a great way to play with polarity and sort of interrupt 
things a little bit. So if things have gotten a little sedentary or a little, so you've got a little set in your ways, that's a really good one, right? Mm -hmm. The third thing, the third tip is the present sensation statement. So the present sensation statement, I'm getting so juicy right now, <laughs> thinking about you, thinking about, you know, how good you make me feel. You know, it's something like that where he he recognizes in the in the present moment that just thinking about you is is turning you on, right? The thinking about mm -hmm. him turning you on, that's like that's like one of those things that uh that's really, really, really hot, right? So, you know, another so then and then on the other side of that is the present sensation question, right? So the present sensation question is where you ask him, how does it feel? to know what I want to do to you? How does it feel to know how much you're turning me on right now? It's you making a conscious invitation for him to step into vulnerability and for him to play with you. A lot of times this won't even be necessary because a man is going to respond by default. If you lead by example and use these texts with him and you open the door, like men are going to be happy <laughs> to go down the, to, to, to go through that door and to play with you in the terms of sensuality and sensual texting. Right. But okay. if not, you can really, you can invite him to, to express these things and it'll be super, super, super hot. Right. And then, you know, the fifth, the fifth thing we talked about was sort of like sexy questions, right. And specifically questions asked in a warm, curious, non-judgmental way about the sort of sex that he loves about his best sexual experiences he's had with previous partners. It's a, it's a huge demonstration of confidence for you to have the courage to ask those questions. And if you're, you will learn a ton, you'll learn more about your partner <laughs> by asking him about his favorite, you know, his most hot things that you've experienced with him or that he's experienced in past relationships relationships, you will learn more about him through those questions and you will build tremendous amounts of intimacy and trust with him. He will see you as a safe space. If you can mm -hmm. ask those questions, because trust me, he will not volunteer that information. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Again, yeah. If, if it's something that you actually want to hear about and talk about, right? don't ask a question you don't want to hear the answer to. But <laughs> if you're exactly. open to that and he's probably going to ask you right back. So be prepared to talk about your, you know, some of your favorite things that you like to do. Right. Love you it. Can't just, you so can't much. be willing to dish it out, but not take it. Yeah. Right. You got to be able to. <laughs> Got to be yeah. able to give as well as you get. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And then the last thing is obviously the power of multimedia messaging, mm. uh, voice text. You can do any of these texts as a voice message, either through Android or Apple. And either of those, like it, it supercharges it like 10 X's the impact that it's going to have on him. Then it's going to turn him on. If you do this as a sensual, sexy voice message, and mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you don't like the sound of your voice, guess what? He likes the sound of your voice. Mm -hmm. And if you're purring into the phone telling him about all this, you know, sensual stuff that you're really excited about, you know, he's going to, he's going to be into it. Okay. And it's yeah. also going to demonstrate high value to him because it demonstrates that you're confident enough to own your voice and tell him what you like and what, yeah. and how you're demonstrate to him, how you're feeling. Right. So very important stuff. And then the last yeah. thing of course is, you know, teasing video or teasing, uh, teasing visual stuff, mm -hmm. like you gripping the hem of your skirt or chewing on a pen cap or doing something that demonstrates that you're really turned on, that you're activated by him, but keep it teasing. Don't go full Monty <laughs> on him <laughs> unless you want to escalate things through, through the roof. Right. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. Love it. So great. Yeah. I'm really curious to hear. So everyone, I, some people say, I'm going to, I'm going to text him as soon as we're done. <laughs> yeah. Let us know what happens. Come back and let us know what happens. Yes. I'm so curious. I love learning from you guys too, in your situations. So I scroll all the way back up to the top and you have time for a few questions. I know we're a little over 30 minutes, but we talked okay. about feminine energy in the beginning of this is feminine energy and surrender synonymous. I, from my perspective, I think surrender is a big part of feminine energy. Mm -hmm. But I think there's so much more to it. It's it's feminine energy is not about just being girly and bubbly and all that. It has nothing to do with any of that stuff. It's the part of yourself and also the part of a man. We all have both feminine and masculine in us, right? But the part of you that's connected to your emotions and your feelings and your body sensations and trusting and allowing things to unfold and being able to express yourself from that place and receiving so much. There's so much. I would love to hear a man's perspective on this, Matt, if you want to share anything. I, I complete. I was get, literally took the words out of my mouth. Mm. I think surrender is a is a is an is an important component yeah. of being in your feminine, but it's not obviously the whole thing. And, and mm -hmm. the other. Thing 
important nuance because you expressed that also beautifully. The other important nuance I want to I want to speak into on this is that surrender and passivity are not the same thing. Oh, so like, true. Yeah. A lot of women, especially women that spend a lot of time in their masculine with work, right? That 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 have that have built successful careers. They've moved mountains, they've raised families by themselves because their husband left. They almost have this mocking sort of like energy around femininity mm -hmm. because they've created a synonymousness between feminine energy and passivity. They think being your feminine means being weak. Mm. And honestly, nothing could be further from the truth, right? Being in surrender means that you are so confident and so connected enough with yourself and so confident that you're willing to lower your walls, right? It's extremely courageous and, and extremely strong to lower your walls and be open to connection and relationship, mm -hmm. it's surrendering. And it's very activating to a man to feel a woman, you know, lower her walls and be open to connecting with him, right? Whether it be emotionally or even physically. Physically, right? Because a lot of men, especially men who are maybe more dominant in the bedroom, it's extremely activating for men like like us to feel a woman have the courage to really trust us and surrender herself to us and trust that we're gonna make her feel good. You know mm, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. like surrender is extremely hot, it's extremely yeah. activating, and it's a huge component of feminine energy, but it's by no means the whole thing. But it ain't passivity it. and it ain't yeah. <laughs> I love it. I, yeah, I just did a whole podcast episode. My my most recent one just on that, you know, misconceptions or myths around feminine energy. That was one of the big ones is that it means just being weak or super passive or just waiting around and a guy gets to do whatever he wants or come and go as he pleases and you just have to wait around. That's the opposite of what empowered feminine energy is. So thank you for that question. She has another one. What's the best way to communicate boundaries to a man who's moving too fast or talking about sex too early? Great question. It's kind of the other side of this. I, I'm sure you have some great scripts that, that a woman can say, right? I do. Well, I mean, the big, the big principle to remember when communicating boundaries to a man, especially in the early stages of relationship, right, is to you want to you want to create positive, constructive boundaries with him. So you want to instead of like telling him, no, don't do that. That's bad. Like instead of scolding him for things that you don't that you you don't like mm -hmm. first start off by inviting him to do things that you do like right so communicating so, so if he's moving too fast just be like hey I'd, I'd love it yeah i'd love it if we slow down a little bit because i'm really enjoying getting to know you you know and i want to i want to see where this goes right and and so like I would love it. You want to ground a positive constructive boundary is done by doing it through a positive feeling statement. I would love it if we did this. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like I or like if a guy is trying to talk about sex too early, right? Be like, wow, we well, we just met dot, dot, dot. So how about we keep the conversation, you know, PG 13 like that? It'd be, I think it'd be really fun if we just kept the conversation, you know, you know, PG 13 right now. So you see, mm -hmm. you want to invite him to to move in a in a positive direction towards what you want because when you're scolding a man and you're reprimanding and you're sort of like pushing him away from what you don't want it, it has the possibility of you know like more emasculating him mm -hmm. and also activating his whole mama trauma where he spent his whole life being sort of scolded and, and disciplined by his mother and you do not want to put yourself in the mother frame uh with him you know right and, love it uh, yeah and then, you know, of course, I'm not saying that, you know, you never want to say like, hey, I, I'm not comfortable with this. You 100%, mm -hmm. there's a time and place where that's 100%, you know, uh, important, you know, to be able to do that and to demonstrate and to own your voice that way. But you want to start this way, especially yeah. in the early stages, because you're setting the tempo, right? Is you're the conductor <laughs> is the, right, right, the frame right. I use a lot, right? You're the conductor of the emotional and communicative aspects of your relationship. And one of the greatest things that, import, that a conductor does is set the tempo and you do that through your boundaries. You pace him because he's yeah. gonna try to push. Mm -hmm. Nice guys, nice guys will push. Nice guys will see where the boundaries are because nice guys are horny too. I hate to break <laughs> it to you. Like good guys are horny too. Tom, Tom is horny. Tom, I'm just saying it right now, Helena and Helena, <laughs> your guy, <laughs> He's uh, he's a the physical dude like that guy That's has so a sex funny. drive. I have absolutely no doubt, Helena. And you don't need to get into specifics. But <laughs> my guys, they are activated too, right? I so it's it. up to you to to pace them through yeah. 
positive boundaries that still incentivize them to keep moving forward. That, you know, I was just going to say, yeah, this is for a nice guy, a good guy who's shown that he's good in other ways. Obviously, if you're online dating and a guy just comes right out the gate and his first or second message starts talking about sex or asking you about sex or ask for photos or nudes or whatever, get rid of him. We're not talking yeah. about like coddling those guys, right? We're saying if it's yeah. a good guy, right? A good guy. Um, Love that. Uh, somebody, I scroll all the way back up to that. Tina asked, does this work with a guy friend I have a crush on? Interesting. I love that you asked that. Yeah. I mean, I think with a guy that you have a crush on, especially, okay, a guy friend, uh, it absolutely can, but you want to definitely like, you want to, you want to be very nuanced and subtle and gentle with the way that you escalate with a guy that you're friends with. Right. But because you also want to be able to feel him out. Right. Cause if you sort of elevate things a little bit and just talk a little bit about, Oh, I was thinking about you today. This, this, I, I saw this, I saw this, you know, sexy, you know, shirt. I think it would look good on you. Like, mm. you know, being, being more subtle with the way you text a, a guy friend and then seeing how he responds before you go full on <laughs> and start like sending him really sexual texts, like, you know, just feel up, feel him out first. Cause you, you want to still, you want to see how he responds. And then if he's not like responding too much, then you can elevate it and escalate it a little bit. But like, I would be gentle with that because if he's a friend and he, that's the way he sees you and he doesn't necessarily want to go there, you'll, 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 you'll get clarity around, you know, like where his feelings are at and be mm -hmm. able to, you know, move forward from there. Cause you don't yeah. want to, you know, mess up the friendship, right. Or to get things weird with y'all. That's so good. I'm so glad you clarified that. That was a great question. Um, speaking of online dating, we just talked about this in the last one. Uh, if how to not make him feel unwanted, but set boundaries, for example, he wants to kiss on the first date. I don't, and I don't, he kind of felt like I was rejecting him. We, I think we answered that a little bit in the last one, but any more, more thoughts on this? Yeah. And again, you know, like there are ways to, uh, let a man down gently with that, because I'll be honest, you know, if I'm on a first date with a girl and it has gone well, I'm one of those guys, I'm going to go for it. Like if, if, if it's a girl that, you know, we've had a great time, the connection is there. And if she gives me the, 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 the head lean or the full on, you know, like the hard, the hard put the hard press back, you know, then it is, it can be a little wounding at the egoic level. It can feel a little like a rejection to him, mm -hmm. but, but your energy with the way that you do that, right. If you just give him a smile and sort of like a head lean and you kiss him on the cheek instead, or you give him, you know, and you're gentle about it and you say, oh, I'm not one of those, I'm not one of those kiss on the first date kind of girls. I guess you'll have to ask me out again. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. If you are interested uh -huh. in seeing this guy again, instead of flat out rejecting him, you want to redirect him. You want to deflect him and say, not this time, but play your cards right. And we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens, you know, in the future. You know what yes. I'm saying? Yeah. Uh-huh. I love it. I think that's great. Yeah. She also said, I don't know how to show interest in state, but yeah, you answered that. Perfect. I think that's really good. Um, the, everyone's loving this stuff. Uh, loving this information, Matt. Oh my gosh. Yes. I'm loving this. Thank you guys so much. Everyone's saying like, this is the best information. I really need this. Okay. I get questions like this all the time. What about this one from Kathy? The guy I'm dating says in the past, the girl always initiated and he was always pursued. I don't want to chase. Is there a way to turn this around? Like, is there a point which she just should walk away or do you have any suggestions here, Matt? So, I mean, I guess the question I would ask you, Kathy, is, is he complaining about the fact that he was always chasing the past and you're not chasing him? You know, is it something that he wishes that you would do more of? And Because it's not about you chasing him, but it can be nice for a guy to occasionally feel like a woman is taking initiative, you know, like just at, not all the time, but just every now and again. Like it's okay. It's okay for you to say, Hey, you know, let me, let me, you've, you've bought me so many dinners. Let me buy you pizza tonight, you know, like, or, or, you know, like, Hey, let's, let's go do this. Let's go do this fun thing. You know, that like, I really wanted to do, Oh, here she goes. She, she, she gives more information. She complained that I wasn't kissing him and not texting enough. Okay. Well, that's important to, that's important additional information. Right. Yeah. So you got to remember, right. You know, men see physical connection, especially once you're dating or in relationship with them, men see physical connection as emotional intimacy. It's an important like mechanism of emotional communication with a woman. So if he is, if he's feeling like you're not kissing him enough, then that's actually like, he's feeling emotionally starved from mm. you. You know what I'm saying? So I would, you know, I would, I would invite you to look at what's, why, why have you categorized kissing him with chasing him? 
why do you feel like kissing him is in some way like is that giving him why do you feel like that's giving him too much like mm. a lot of women complain that the guys that they're dating don't kiss them enough mm -hmm. or, or at all you know what i'm saying so he's wanting more from you but don't necessarily predicate it that it's just physical i think it might be emotional because a lot of times what you're saying right here is what a lot of women are complaining about he doesn't mm -hmm. kiss enough he doesn't text me enough <laughs> right so yeah. you gotta gotta you, you got a good you have a good problem i hate to <laughs> yeah I hate to, I hate to say it. and and texting him doesn't mean that you're chasing him you know what i'm saying like all the things we've just talked about mm -hmm. are ways for you to text him in an activating way and invite him to step into the driver's seat and lead the conversation exactly exactly yeah this whole feminine energy thing again it's a state of mind it's not like oh i text him i'm in my masculine now i'm leaning back i'm in my feminine it's not that's a very superficial <laughs> way to think about things and i know there's some coaches out there who speak out against feminine energy because they have this real superficial understanding of it yeah. it's not yeah. that i'm leaning forward i'm in my masculine i'm, I'm leaning back i'm in my feminine that's not the, what we're talking about here this is this work is much much deeper so if you want to go really deep make sure to join uh matt's course which starts yeah. February 8th, totally yeah. 100% free. I, I recommend it so much. Um, yes. Okay. These answers yeah, are really yeah, helpful. Yeah. We, start, we start February 8th, y'all. Mastery of Connection. It's going to be a live course, three weeks with me and my team of coaches. I do live office hours twice a week. You get like 15 video lessons. It's an awesome experience and uh, it will help you connect better with men from the inside out. It's yeah. true. Yeah. And, and also Kathy says that that was really helpful. Um, awesome. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back. This is, we'll, maybe we'll take uh, this last one. Guy, we're our, like 15 minutes over already. <laughs> so happens. Day, Matt is the king of over delivering and uh -huh. getting everyone's questions answered. He's the best. So your oh, guys yeah. are going to love his course and his personal office hours. If you have questions that, you know, we didn't get to or anything like that, join his course and get your questions answered, you know, for, was it two weeks, two weeks long? It's going to be three weeks, three, three weeks, weeks wow. of live coaching and content with me. So truly like, it'll be, it's going to be a life changing experience for everyone who signs up. I guarantee yeah. you. Yeah, I totally, you guys are going to absolutely love it. Okay. How about this is along the same lines. How do I let guys know I like him to take the lead without making it feel, making him feel like I'm too available? Well, again, and it all comes back to subtlety, right? It all mm -hmm. comes back to like playfully, you know, being like, hey, you know, this, this, uh, have you, has anybody ever told you that you look like, this is funny. I actually said this, I wasn't hitting on him, but I said this to Mark Rosenfeld uh, a couple of days ago. I was watching this show, uh, Poldark, and I was like, have you seen Poldark? I haven't, no. Uh -huh. it's, it's this show and it's got this like roguish, you know, English dude with like long black hair as the main character and he's a total stud. And I'm just like, and I'm just like, dude, has anybody ever told you, 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 you like, this is like your twin, like Poldark? You know, and I said it to him in like a playful way. But if that was coming from a woman, you know, that would be something that would be, you know, inviting a man, demonstrating to a man that you're maybe interested in him mm -hmm. or you see him as attractive, you know, but without, but without, you know, coming straight out and, and saying it, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. if it's a guy that you're not, if it's a guy that you're not currently connected with romantically and you want to sort of turn the conversation in that way, doing like a playful thing. Has anyone ever said you, has anyone ever told you, you kind of look like Ryan Gosling or something, or just giving him like, like a sweet little compliment, something, and then seeing how he responds to that. Mm -hmm. And that can be a, an activating way to let him know, Hey, I see you as uh, a potential, you know, person, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you, how do you see me? You know, because then you're inviting him to sort of like respond to that in whatever way that that he will. That but, was really good. I've never, yeah, I've never heard anyone actually give an example like that. I thought that was really, really good. And this will make this the last one because it just came through. Cynthia says, how do you say to your boyfriend that you want more time doing something together once a week or something without seeing needy? So yeah, what if uh, someone's in a relationship? She said, mm -hmm. we can't see each other soon for now. Would you recommend her doing some of the texts we talk about here? Or is there something else she should say? Yeah. Okay. So how do you say to your boyfriend that you want more time doing something together once a week or something without seeming needy? It's because we can't see each other soon for now. Okay. So, I mean, I always like to like talking about positive, constructive boundaries, like seeing you, you know, brightens up my day and I love having bright days. So, like, do you think we could hang out, you know, once a week? Like, would that be fun? You know, like, like grounding him, like, Hey, you know, I love this. You know, could we do more of this, right? Like it, it feels, I have so much fun when we're together, 
You know, like, can we, why, why don't we hang out, you know, more often, you know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you're always kind of grounded in how much you enjoy it, how much you appreciate it. Right. And again, it's not, that isn't going to necessarily make you seem needy. It all comes down to the energy that you have around it. You know, you're making yeah. a powerful request for something that's going to make you feel good. It's a confident move <laughs> to be like, Hey, this is something that makes me feel good. Could we do more of that? That isn't being needy. You know, like women get so scared of appearing needy, of appearing too forward, of appearing yeah. masculine, that a lot of times they make themselves complete, unavailable mysteries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> man, and then they wonder why men check out, pull away, don't feel safe, don't give him that, you know, don't give him that. That It's like you want to acknowledge him. And also like, like Kathy Mee says here, right? Acknowledge him, be like, oh my gosh, this was so much fun seeing you tonight. Like, I, I'd love it if we could do it again soon. What do you think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. Like acknowledge, acknowledge him like positive reinforcement. Y'all men are like dogs. That's an old video I did with my dog Bosco like, <laughs> the whole time. And men, just like dogs, we respond much better to positive reinforcement than we do to negative reinforcement. That's true. Do not rub our face in our pee. Don't do mm -hmm. that with us. Like give us a treat <laughs> when we do something right. Give us some acknowledgement. Give us some physical touch, right? Give us something that we're going to resonate with and we're going to be much more likely to do what it is that you want us to do from a, from an enthusiastic and activated space. Because you don't want a man doing stuff that you want him to do because he feels like he has to. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. You want him to always be like, oh, I'm excited. Oh, I'm making her happy. This is lighting her up. This is something that she wants. Therefore, I want to do more of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. All right. This is amazing. And we're only 20 minutes over now. So thank you for staying longer, Matt. You are so awesome. You always just um, want to get to all the questions. I love it so much. Yes, Kristen just signed up for the course. If you can still apply, if the application is still open, that means you, there's still potentially room in the course. So definitely apply. I know it's going to fill up really fast because Matt is going to give you a lot of personal attention and coaching during this three week, totally free course. And it's going to change your life. I can pretty much guarantee that's the feedback I get from everyone. There's a few people in the chat. So they took it last year and it changed their life. And I know it's going to help you too, no matter what your situation is. Anything else you want to say before we close out, Matt? Absolutely. And just final, final thoughts on the course, you know, like single dating in relationship, not looking to be in a relationship. It doesn't matter what phase of your life you're in. Mm -hmm. This course will really make a huge difference for you. We talk about beliefs, attachment style, personality type. I help you understand who you are and why you connect with people the way that you do. And mm -hmm. you can take that information and those takeaways and those aha moments and use them and use them for the rest of your life. To yeah. have better relationships, to have a better relationship with yourself, really. Because at yeah. the end of the day, right, your relationships with other people are all a reflection of your relationship with yourself. So yeah. we're going to help you, you know, <laughs> reintroduce yourself to yourself so that you can have better relationships for the rest of your life. Yes. So um, uh, come, yeah, exactly. come play, come play with us in mastery. We start February 8th. So the clock is ticking y'all and we will, we will fill up. So don't, uh, don't, don't be scared. Uh, you'll get brand. Oh, look at that. I love that. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> woman, so much more self-confident. This is the kind of feedback I hear all the time. Yes. Um, so great. This is so great. Yes. This will be reposted. Just come back to this link. As soon as I, as soon as we're done, you can just watch the replay and, uh, no technical issues. This was amazing. I'm so, I feel like I have my setup finally. <laughs> I figured it out. It only took months and months and months, but this was amazing. Thank you, Matt, so much. It was and, such a, it was such a pleasure. And just last, last message on this con, this concept ladies is that like, Time is an illusion and distance is an illusion too. Mm -hmm. your connection with a guy, your, your true deep connection with a man consciously created can transcend all of that. So yeah. through the way that you direct your energy through text, through, through your words, through everything, you can activate him no matter if you're on opposite sides of the planet, no matter when you're going to see each other next, right? Long distance relationships can work as long as they're done intentionally and consciously. Mm -hmm. Both partners are, are really committed to cultivating that intimacy. So don't let quarantine, you know, disincentivize you yeah. from building connections and relationships with men. We're craving it too, ladies. <laughs> we, we, we want, we want y'all. I promise <laughs> we want y'all to connect with us. 
us. So uh, please give us give us a shot. Yeah. And again, whether you're 100 percent single, no men in the picture or you're married for decades, this course will definitely help you no matter what uh, mm -hmm. situation you're in. Yeah. As Don says, empowering and life changing course. Um, you guys are so awesome. I could just sit here forever and, and hang out with you guys. So we'll close out. <laughs> Have a great weekend, everybody. And uh, don't forget to sign up for Mastery Connection totally free. And Matt, thank you so much again. I'll talk to you soon. It was such a pleasure, Elena. Talk to you soon. Bye, ladies.